love, humanity, empathy. Connect to the people, to teach, to learn, to make the world a better place. Zoom out your vision, your inspiration, and your aspiration. And bring raise of smiles to those people that want to become something better than what they already are. It's for those people that see more than one just meets the eyes. It's for those that believe in the time-taking process. My name is Anwesha Misha, who has a very sore voice, 14 years old, born and raised in the capital of Silicon Valley, San Jose, California. Being raised as an Indian American, I consider myself very fortunate to be a part of the melting pot of both cultures. My cultures have taught me how to face the problems gracefully and to learn to admire their wrong deeds so that I won't be stuck with their misprocess within me throughout my life. When I was a kid, which wasn't too long ago, I thought one of the greatest gifts my parents could give me was a cardboard box. When my dad used to come home with this cardboard box in his hand to give it to me, I would feel as if I had won the lottery. With this cardboard box, I could become anything. I could become a brave pirate that sailed the seas or an astronaut that went to the moon. Really, with this box, I had no limits, being a three to four year old. But it seemed as if the further in age I got from being that three to four year old, the further I drifted away from my box. But it wasn't just me, it was all of us. And this idea takes me millions of miles away into a certain direction, helps me connect and rethink my old ideas to come up with a new objective. And this pushed me for success in my instant challenge skills, which helped my engineering skills. Every accomplishment starts with the decision to try something new. I have always been surrounded by very supporting people. They've helped me analyze, correct, and reflect my, from my mistakes. From there, I was encouraged into not letting others make the same mistakes that I made. I was always an avid speller. Starting from a young age, I competed in numerous spelling bees and my preparation for them was around the clock. But I never got a chance to fully carry it out. And I felt just devastated at the fact that my years of such hard work would go to waste. I talked to a teacher and they had told me, it's much more important to focus on the journey rather than the end outcome. And looking back at it now, that advice is so powerful. And that's exactly what I did. After starting this club, I really felt the teaching spirit. Even after getting offers from older kids to teach, it helped me realize that even though I couldn't compete in spelling bees myself, teaching spelling and teaching kids was what I loved to do the most. When I visited India when I was in just fourth grade, I considered myself relatively social. I wanted to connect more with my family members and learn more about my origin. In America, specifically in our community, there are so many Indian people. But it was different than talking to people in India. In America, it seemed to me as if everyone had a different reason, a different story, and a different way of living. In India, the similarity within people seemed so prominent to me. But for a much simpler reason, I couldn't communicate, and that was the language barrier. It had been put up so high that no one could put, go through it. We had to have a mediator between us, which was probably my parents, translating everything that I said. So, one of my aunts is a teacher, and when I would go and observe and see how she taught her students, I would feel this emptiness within me. No matter how much I would try and connect with these kids, it didn't seem to happen, because I knew that this result would be time-taking. <laughs> And this time-taking result led me to Raise of Smiles. Raise of Smiles is a hope and a goal to bring a smile to each and every kid's face. Children are all unique and different in their own way, and we are here to help nurture that creativity and brilliancy. We plan to introduce topics and projects to them that will help them have a spark of ingenuity to create and become something greater. I was fortunate enough to found Raise of Smiles, and through this nonprofit organization, I was able to meet and be acquaintances with so many inspirational people. When you enter a classroom, there are always two perspectives, one from the teacher and one from the students. Speaking from the teacher's point respectively, I always put myself in the student's shoes. 
is what I'm teaching enjoyable? Is what I'm teaching going to make an impact on what these students already know? That's what's great about being a student teaching other students and peers. I constantly absorb information from people around me, my teachers, my friends. But at the same time, I'm able to share that information that I just learned. And that is really beneficial. Raise of Smiles has had two projects. The first project was called the Cambrian Project. And in this project, I taught spelling and robotics to kids at our local library. The second project was our first international project, and this was in India. I, this is called the Ashram Project School. Ashram School Project. So initially, I had taught these students over voice and video call. And just two weeks ago, I went in person and taught them. And this, this was an experience to remember. I entered into this classroom with 45 girls on the left and 11 boys on the right. I got 66 cold stares right at me waiting for me to speak to them, but nothing came out of me. I had to do and teach them in my second language, which was Oriya, which was much harder for me since I previously and initially taught in English. After this rough 45 minutes, I was able to connect with these kids so well, it was so heartwarming. These kids were our orphans and um, from the lower class family, and they had left their families and village to come and get a better education. Robotics is a very hard topic to grasp. It involves motors and the prior knowledge of how motors work. But these kids were able to capture it so well because they had the interest. And when a student has the interest, will, and courage to come back into a classroom, you know that the teacher has done their job. Through full scholarship, I was invited to the National Women's Book Association Conference. There I reflected on a couple of things. We often hear that repetition is key, but why is that? Repeating something can take endless amounts of patience that most of us don't have and don't have time for. While leading these clubs, I often made kids do things over and over again before they came to me for assistance. But along with repetition can come rejection, the one thing that we're all scared of. When I was at this conference, I talked to so many women, and there I was embarrassed of saying how many times I've gotten rejected by so many people for so many different things. But these women had gotten rejected over a hundred times, and they didn't have the fear within them of coming back. They had this radiance to them that seemed everlasting, and that was something that I would love to have, because these women showed up again, even though they had gotten rejected and they believed in what they did, and they were confident in it. When we think about it, children are a lot like blank canvases, new to the whole world for such a long time. They're like this because they buy the artist some time to come up and think of a masterpiece, because this masterpiece will decide their life. This masterpiece will either end up being a top-selling masterpiece or a masterpiece that's thrown in your basement, never seen again. That's what the artist had to do. Every time a kid engages in something new and learns, it's as if a brushstroke is placed through their canvas. And as time goes on, the more brushstrokes they collect, the more their masterpiece is in progress of being completed. But there comes this time when there isn't enough room on that canvas, when that canvas becomes full and the masterpiece is done. That's why I plan to tar I target to teach kids at a much younger age because then they have a much broader perspective of what's to come and what they will learn. When I zoomed out, I ended up on an entirely different platform, which was robotics. Our team, which has been together for the past three to four years, competed in FOL and now FTC. And with my dad's dedicated coaching, hard work, and time, we made it to the championship tournament being our first year in this much higher and harder level. One of the awards we won was called the Connect Award. And that made me think, why do we connect with people? There are millions of apps that help us connect with people. There are books, apps, and even specialists and websites that help us connect with people. But the easiest way to connect with someone is by sparking a conversation. And to do that is to engage and listen in it. When we zoom out, we look at the whole picture. And when I zoomed out, I found my future. And if I can do it, 
Anyone can do it. You were the yesterday, the last week, the last year. You were the two minutes of instant regret and the two minutes of my accomplishment. You are full of my mistakes, errors, and mess-ups. You are full of the things I want to forget about and the things I want to hold on to forever. You flood my brain with flashbacks, but never do this with my consent. You are the voice that guides me through the tough times and the voice that puts me into never-ending quicksand. You are the voice that keeps me up at night and the voice that puts me to sleep. You hold on to me like a scared child who won't let go of their mother because you are scared for me and worried for what I'm going to do. You feel as if I'm going to forget bits and pieces of you as time goes on. You are my past and you will be close to me, whether in my head or in my words. When we zoom out, it's to look at the whole picture. It's on how you can make an impact not only on someone else, but in your community and even in parts of the world. Zooming out to me is to look at everything else, not simply on yourself.